Well, that a disappointing afternoon to, to say the least. What on earth went wrong today? Um, started the game so poorly. Um, some diabolical moments defending parts to play in the goals. 3 0 down after that short amount of time. Um, we didn't seem ready for, for that in terms of the brightness and the speed of the game. Um, I think the, the script was set in terms of what to expect from the opposition. We just couldn't match it. In all honesty, it looked like some couldn't match it and some didn't quite have it in their minds to try and to, to match it enough. I mean, how disappointed were you with particularly the first goal? It was embarrassing, wasn't it? It was embarrassing. I can't fault Connor Taylor. He's got there first, played it back to our goalkeeper. It looked Jed's a young kid. Um, there's a lot of young players on that pitch who are learning the games, but there's certain moments in the game which we, we just can't happen. Um, it almost went in, went in our goal. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're defending the corner, we defend the first one, and then naivety of marking and zone play um, was there for all to see. And then all of a sudden, their bright start turned into a really good start, and we didn't have anything else to hold on to. It just looked like it, it drained the confidence fr from the players because you knew how much they are in form and particularly attacking wise. You say that but look at the chances we've created. Mm. Yes, that is the madness of that game. Mm. Um, I think we've had 13 compared to their 11 and I'd say five of those are one on ones and should score, should do better moments and their goals, like I said, diabolical defending but that's, that's my responsibility. I, I coach them, I train them, young, old, senior, whatever they are, whatever their situation next year, they're still my responsibility. All I ask for them is a little bit more personal pride in their performance um, because, like I say, for that first half an hour, that was uh, too poor a showing for, for certainly for me to accept. And you made a double change. You obviously didn't concede later on in that, in that first half. How, how difficult was that decision to make those two substitutions in the first half? Not difficult at all. Um, not difficult at all, I'm afraid. Um, like I say, there's a bigger picture which we all know about. Is that affecting some players on the pitch at the moment? You only damage yourself by playing like that. You only damage yourself, you only damage your own future. So um, clarity is all I need working forward. Um, and that's taught me a little bit more about some of the personnel today. I mean, you mentioned the chances in the first half. Were you then disappointed well, it, with... It's, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant because we've said so many times about a team who looks good in terms of creating. We didn't score them. Mm. But goal against, goal against, goal against, goal against irrelevant. We can look like a, a good footballing team at times if we don't do the basics of defending the fundamentals of football, run a bit harder, get better in 1v1 moments, stop forward play, stop forward crosses. Everything you need just to have a bit of substance about you before skill comes on top of it. And then those skill moments you're talking about, maybe one of those goes in the back of the net. But even second half when we've got the penalty and we've got chances, that sums us up today. And you mentioned the second half. Did you expect a bit more of a reaction than you got? It's the same pattern, same pattern. Um, we, we started with a bit more brightness, got to the ball and then the, the goals. People will, will watch the goals on the highlights tonight. I, I would always advise people to watch the 90 seconds or two minutes beforehand. Um, it's, it's incredible what we, what we put ourselves into certain positions where, like I say, I'd, I'd love goalkeepers and centre-halves to take on the instructions of if it has to go into row Z, then, then so be it, mm. rather than in, in the back of our net or a chance against them. Um, it's not just on them because of other people to play in those moments. Um, like I say, it, it's so frustrating because I want us to be a certain type of team first before we even start to play the short, sharp, smart passes, which I suppose we're renowned for. Renowned for also getting beat and leaking too many goals. I said this to, to Sam Finley. There are supporters who think the players have checked out being on 50 points in, in mid-table. Is that something you recognise? Yeah, well, I'll be asking that question. I, I can see what they can see, let's be honest. I mean, it's, it's a constant battle to, to get them where they need to be. In terms of being up for a game, that's a damning statement of, of where some of them are. But some of their situations is out of my control. I've obviously inherited it. Obviously, it's always difficult when a manager comes in mid-season and then there's a big expected turnover at the end of the season. But has anyone done themselves any? <laughs> it's, you know, it's a world of opportunity football. Um, but also, if you don't take it and you perform like we did to start with, not only do we get the biggest slap today is a result in the scoreline and the embarrassment of that, but also there is a bigger picture where decisions have to be made. But those decisions can become easier as opposed to harder ones. So a real, a real shame and the supporters are right to ask that question. And I imagine, like you say, they're not just playing for their future at Bristol Rovers, but at potentially a future club. Yeah, professional game. Um, were we professional enough in their terms of our own game to, to start that? You know, that, that the scoreline suggests suggest not. Um, but, like I say, on another day, that first moment doesn't go in their way and then we take our first chance. We might be having a totally different conversation, but too often this season it's been this 
sort of discussion, these sort of points about what's to come. And, and how many games we've got left? Eight or nine still games of football left. And our supporters have travelled a long way and spent a lot of money in relation today. Um, so I, it's it's clear for me in terms of not only will I be asking, I'll take some of those questions out of the equation. And if I don't think some are fully in, and I mean 100% in, then they won't train with us. Unfortunately, I've never been a manager to to banish players from the training ground. Obviously, I've inherited players not at the training ground, and it's such a strange situation. But it gives me a bit of understanding of maybe what happened previously. If players aren't fully in, then there's no point in being around. So that's taught you what you want from a Matt Taylor Bristol Rovers side. I know what I want. Maybe a little while before before we get there. Every now and then we take a, a big step forward and then take ten steps back. Let's be honest in terms of today. And how frustrating that you've now got the international break, or is that a, a positive? Because you don't want to be dwelling on the result. Um, well, it's probably a positive in terms of where some of their bodies are and some of their minds are. Um, they might need a bit of time uh, away from myself. I need certainly need a bit of time away from from them. Um, but then when they come back, like I say, hopefully there's some of the the ones who are stronger with themselves um, will be available and stay available. Um, great to get Brandon on the pitch, mm -hmm. but he'll be in a cameo performance for towards the end of the game. Um, hopefully Grant Ward, Josh Grant. Lewis Gordon, but it's all if buts and maybes, and you never know on the back of today. Like we always do after every game, we might pick up something more. And there's probably there's a four of them away on international duty, so we'll be watching how that unfolds from afar.